Okay, <coughs> thank you. Yes, I also would like to thank the National Bank for giving us the opportunity for presenting this paper. Uh, it's a paper with many authors, uh, maybe something that you don't see from this title, that the reason why we have so many authors is not only based on expertise, but also sharing the data, as this data, this paper looks at multi-country analysis at the level of the firm. So the idea, the, <coughs> the title is digitalization, exports, and uh, to what extent, what the role of TFP productivity has been in explaining the uh, indirect and the direct effect of ICT on export. Uh, this is just a brief structure of my presentation, so I will start with explaining a little bit the motivation of the paper, the context, uh, a little bit about the empirical framework, uh, something about the data results and a conclusion along with some policy implications. So the idea of this paper is that ICT somehow, if we look at ICT and productivity, uh, it still falls within this general framework of innovation. Nevertheless, ICT has something which is quite peculiar if we were to compare this with innovation, the specialty about this ICT somehow is that, uh, first of all, when you want to read some benefits, it's that the presence of organizational change is very important. So that means, in plain words, if you want to reap the benefits of ICT on productivity, you need to have the right people that are also able to digest this ICT and transform it in some type of productivity gains. That may also explain to a certain extent why we have within the literature some kind of ambiguous findings. So some do find some productivity effects, others find that there are no effects. And one of those uh, reasons is that there might be some type of time lags. Uh, that being said, uh, so the human capital aspect is quite important. And now also a recent uh, stream of literature has also looked at the direct, indirect relationship between ICT and export, where, for instance, ICT also generates all type of advantages. They may be due to reduction of transaction costs. Now, there are some within innovation and internationalization. The same actually can also be said about ICT. So we have the uh, learning by doing, in other words, uh, effect so that, in other words, innovation lead to more exports through, for instance, uh, the utilization of technology innovation. On the other hand, we have the learning by exporting effects so that even also firms may learn from abroad in terms of also generating advantages in terms of ICT investments. There are some explaining mechanisms. The paper is quite elaborate on the literature review. Uh, if you just would like to summarize this in a couple of bullet points, is that first of all, ICT creates uh, competitive advantages when you enter new foreign markets. So in other words, it also has some type of a scale effect. On top of that, it also has some type of competition effect, and that's where this paper uh, corroborates quite closely, is that somehow ICT leads to more better productivity, which in turn may also lead, uh, as we have seen from the selection effect, also to higher exports. Now, if we go to the brief, uh, very much brief literature, where we make a distinction between ICT and export, or actually any type of uh, internationalization activity, we do find a uh, few papers. They do mention uh, reasons on why ICT may lead to more export. The aim of this paper is actually to look, uh, to emphasize this productivity mechanism. So we have many objectives. I think the main objective, or the first one, is first of all, uh, try to come up with uh, coherent uh, estimates, coherent where we can actually compare the effects of ICT on export and also through TFP by comparing the effects using coherent data across countries. Uh, so in that sense, uh, we measure TFP, which we let to vary in a more descriptive way by firm and see also according to different heterogeneities of ICT and trade, how this uh, trade actually, you know, in other words, how this relationship can be made. A second one is to look uh, what type of determinants are important in explaining ICT adoption. So I think here in this paper, adoption is a quite crucial word. We do not uh, look at ICT investments it's actually some type of functional titles, functional activities 
that have been uh, used within a firm. So here we look to see to what extent uh, different type of ICTs, much uh, attention in the paper has also been made on the definition of ICT. ICT is a very broad concept. It can be measured in various ways. So we look also any type of ICT heterogeneities. Uh, and then we also look to what extent maybe ICT could also be also perhaps being defined as a more concise overall indicator. Then a third objective is then the econometric part where we then try to disentangle the effect of ICT on export and also try to reconcile the effect of TFP. So here the question is are the findings that we find within the econometric framework also in line in terms of the country specificities that we find in the paper itself. We have some uh, findings, many findings. So the first one is that we do have, there seem to be a very rigorous uh, and also uh, a very steady result that ICT increases export. Nevertheless, the transmission, uh, whether it goes through TFP or direct, differs across countries. Uh, second, we do find that the effect of ICT uh, through uh, TFP through exports is actually also that the same can be reconciled. Well, we ask the question, does that to a certain extent also capture some type of uh, markup effect? So in other words, that the effect of ICT through TFP on export, to what extent can it be explained by markups? And here we do find that to a certain extent, the indirect effect of ICT on export is not significant. So in other words, the TFP is some type of an efficiency mechanism that can be cleared from any type of quality, such as markups or profitability. Then uh, we find that there's some type of heterogeneous effect. So it all depends what type of ECT when we make a relation to export. The fourth is that, and this is quite steady also, is that the aspect of human capital uh, seems to be very important when explaining ICT, TFP and export. So in other words, confirming the importance of uh, key workers within innovation and trade. The fifth one is that we do find some ambiguity in terms of dynamics, so there uh, much more work needs to be done. And the sixth is that somehow, and this is also quite important, is that we look at some type of an econometric framework where we allow from a system of equations where the correlation, so in other words, the simultaneity, the joint effects between ICT, TFP and export is very important, as well the role of unobserved heterogeneity. So, and then as a final point, it also has some policy implications given the fact that first of all, we would like to look at the, the, the channels, the mechanism through which ICT may impact export, and then also to what extent those mechanisms can be explained by different country specificities. Now, on the empirical framework, uh, just very brief, uh, we actually deal with um, some type of, uh, in other words, uh, some type of rigorous assumptions. If you would like to have a very good identification, we would first of all assume if we do control for observed control variables, there's no endogeneity between, for instance, ICT, TFP, which is the omega, and exports, the error of the export equation. Of course, looking at the data, there is a lot of simultaneity. On the other hand, if we would control for the ICT status, we would also assume that there's no endogenous relationship between export TFP, which again, from the data can also be confirmed. So that given, uh, the next challenge is to come up with some type of an empirical framework that in somehow takes into account this jointly simultaneity effect or endogenous effect that may prevail among the three type of activities, that's ICT, export, and TFP. This is the model in a nutshell. So here, what we find are three equations. So we have the ICT, the TFP, the export equation. Uh, each of the ICT, uh, the omega, the TFP, export can be, in other words, explained by X, which are control variables. And what we also do is we allow, because it's a structural framework, 
we allow for correlation between the errors of the ICT for TFP and export. And in addition, we also allow for some type of correlation of the uh, unobserved heterogeneity. Now, there are some additional challenges. So the first of all, this paper is by looking at direct effects. So even though the paper uh, also renders the usefulness of also calculating the total effects, um, we're looking at uh, ICT, which can be measured in various ways. So that, in other words, it can be a binary, a one zero, whether the firm has adopted ICT. We're looking at intensities. Uh, TFP can be measured as a level. Export can also be measured in various ways. So we allow for a system of equations that allow for different type of outcomes where we, in other words, look at simultaneity between ordered logit, OLS, or even uh, logit or tobit equations. We do allow, which is quite important, for unobserved heterogeneity. And on top of that, we also allow for correlations among this unobserved heterogeneity in each of the equations. We also, even though the system doesn't require exogenous control variables, we do uh, allow for some type of better identification by looking specific variables that may explain each of the three outcomes. And we also allow for dynamics. And then also much attention has been devoted in terms of the measurement of TFP allowing also for policy exogenous shocks. Now, looking at the data, uh, so we're looking at three countries, which is France, uh, Belgium, and the Netherlands. Um, first of all, the data um, has been originated for Netherlands Statistics Netherlands, for Belgium, the National Bank, and Stadbel, and ANSI for uh, France. We have about its panel data, about 37,000 panel firm level uh, observations. Uh, so firm year observations for the Netherlands, about 10,000. And for Belgium, about 7,000 observations. We have a treatment of looking at at least three consecutive uh, observations, consecutive years for keeping the panel dimension. Uh, we have access to quite detailed uh, trade data for France and and the Netherlands, my apologies, should be the Netherlands, not Belgium. For Belgium, uh, we were not able to export the uh, transaction data to the ICT. So there we only have actually information on whether the firm exports yes or no, and also the levels. So at this point, we do not have any information on destinations, which to a certain extent allows, doesn't allow us to look at some type of heterogeneity in terms of export activities. The ICT must be measured in a coherent way. So we look at the harmonized survey data, which is um, delivered by Eurostat. Um, much have been devoted on the measurement. So at one hand, we can have opposing type of um, forces within the literature. One hand says that, well, ICT is very much interrelated. So meaning that um, if a firm, for instance, uses a PC, uh, then, of course, uh, the effect of an email on productivity can be very beneficial. So you look at inter interrelations of ICT types. Uh, that's one hand. On the other hand, when you relate ICT to TFP and export, it is, of course, um, very obvious that some types of ICT may be very much more prominent for, for instance, exporting explanations, where other type of ICT is much more related towards some type of productivity issues. What we have done is we have uh, followed the Eurostat definition, where we have constructed a so-called uh, digitalization index. So here you find all items which are quite coherent throughout each of the years. And somehow, so a firm would actually get a score of about 12 points if it has adopted each of those ICT specific items. What we have done is that to explain ICT, we look at some type of an ordered logit. Using a scale of 12 makes the, the model quite complicated. So we retransform this index to four categories from low, medium, low, medium, high to high intensity of digitalization. So the domains, which remains quite robust throughout the years, is that each of those questions fall in different categories, 
related to either digital infrastructure, digital technologies, skills, so the human capital aspect, and then also, in other words, the, well, the three categories, infrastructure, technologies, and skills. Now, looking at the results, as I have mentioned um, just now, is that somehow very much depends on the ICT heterogeneity. What you see here on the left-hand side is a graph, just look at the orange, where we look at the differences between ICT adoption between high versus low productive firms. This is just for the Netherlands. So we see here in terms of TFP, we see that many of those ICT specific technologies that somehow are very much correlated to productivity. On the other hand, when we look at the right hand side of the graph, here we look on whether the firm exports, and here we see that exporting firms, in other words, uh, not all of them, in other words, we see that the orange is not all lining up to the right, so that means that exporting firms uh, somehow do adopt many of the ICT, but for instance, when we look at e-commerce, we find that e-commerce is negatively correlated with exporting activities of the firm, which is not in line with what would we expect. This graph actually tells us that ICT is quite heterogeneous. When you relate it to TFP or export, in other words, it may all depend what type of ICT we are talking about. Now, looking at the results, I will provide some results. I will just discuss the main issues. What you find here is that for each of the countries, you find the three equations. So here we have, in other words, the ICT, which is explained by a bunch of control variables, TFP and the export. ICT is, in other words, explained by past ICT, which is a very important control variable. We also look at some type of dynamics, TFP in the past, export in the past. And the exogenous variation for the identification is basically the past level of each of the dependent variables. The, uh, what we have is that in each of the columns, so in one hand ICT, TFP and export, for instance the role of human capital uh, tends to be for each of the countries being quite positive. So what you find here for Belgium is that somehow ICT has a very uh, significant positive impact on TFP, but when we look at the, the right-hand column, we see that ICT cannot be directly, in other words, related to exporting. So in other words, the uh, relationship between ICT and export goes through TFP. We do find the same relationship for the Netherlands. So in other words, we do find a direct mechanism between ICT and TFP, but ICT cannot, in other words, be directly related to export. Uh, in other words, but then we do see that TFP is very much related to export equation. Looking at France, which is the large country, is in other words, behaving a little bit differently. So here, we see that ICT has a direct impact on TFP, but also uh, a direct effect, uh, impact on export. Uh, so where we find, in other words, in comparison to the other countries, also a direct benefit effect on the export itself. Then, <laughs> excuse me, we have looked at some type of uh, robustness checks. So first of all, we look at uh, exporting not the one zero, but also looking at shares. So here the idea is that, uh, for instance, uh, literature states that the ICT impact is much more to do with the propensities of exporting, less on the levels. What we find here for each of the countries is that actually the same conclusion holds. So in other words, we do not find a direct effect of ICT on export, except for the country France. Then we have looked at the role of markups. So we just replace TFP by markups to ask the question to what extent is profitability to what extent can quality uh, be part of the story? So here we find that, in other words, the relationship between ICT and markups is not significant. So that being said, is that somehow the TFP premium that we find through ICT cannot be explained by quality or markups. Then we have looked at different type of ICT um, technologies. 
So here we have found, for instance, e-commerce. E-commerce has a direct impact on TFP, but it does not have a direct impact on export, so everything goes to TFP. Again, for Netherlands, we find e-commerce is negatively, not in line with expectations related to TFP, and can all not be explained in terms of export, and for France, we still find the same results, where, in other words, e-commerce and productivity both have an effect on export, so the direct and the indirect relationship. Then we have looked at some type of ICT, which is much more related to the TFP part. So here we do find for each of the countries some type of mixed evidence where on one hand it has something to do with TFP, on the other hand it has nothing to do with exporting. Now, that being said, um, on the conclusions, um, so first of all, what can we conclude is that ICT increases exports uh, uh, everywhere, but the transmission mechanism differs across the three countries. In Belgium and the Netherlands, it goes through TFP productivity, where in France, uh, we do find a direct uh, relationship through exports and an indirect relationship through TFP. We do find that in France, part of the productivity effects on export can be explained by the markups, the profitability, which is not the case in Belgium or France. Then, uh, we are looking at firm country-level perspectives, so we have some type of policy uh, implications. Uh, a first policy is that if exporting is a policy goal, uh, export performance is positively to increase productivity, so that means any type of policy which may boost productivity should also on average promote export. A potential policy lever to promote productivity is to provide uh, greater incentives to ICT. So we do find a very clear result that the higher usage of ICT increases productivity. We do find that for small open economies like Belgium, the Netherlands, we do not find a direct effect from ICT on export. We do find it for France. So that being said is that somehow this lower effect of ICT uh, on export in France somehow could be explained some type of catching up effect. So in other words, that in small open countries, the ICT on exports have been already optimized, where in France we may have to do with some type of a catching up effect, which can also, in other words, be reconciled with uh, descriptive data, where we do find some evidence that in terms of lagging behind, that indeed in France, in terms of digital technology intensities, there is some, some lag when we compare those with the Netherlands and Belgium. Thank, Thank you, Mark.